Good morning, Jonathan. It's Sunday, and I thought a lot about your punishment. Your punishment. I thought it was wonderful. As was the rest of your video. I decided to take a leaf out of one of our favorite vloggers' book and do the whole video in the style of Hank Green, telling as many jokes in a short amount of time as possible, and telling you a brief history of puns in the process. And since I can't leaf that leaf well enough alone, I will be right back. Okay, so now that I've changed into something sufficiently nerdy enough, I think I can go ahead and begin the pun fest. I did try to find some glasses too, but I couldn't find any, so I, I think I'm gonna prefer to look at this as a glasses half full situation though. A lot of people like to put puns and sarcasm on the same rung of the humor ladder and call them the lowest form of wit, however I contend that Puns actually have quite the divine history, owing to the fact that Jesus himself used puns. In Matthew 23, he's calling out the Pharisees on their obvious hypocrisy and how they fixate on keeping the tiny details of the law and even exaggerating some parts of it, but also failing to do justice and show mercy to people. So he says, you strain your water to avoid swallowing a gnat, and in the process you swallow a camel. That is paraphrasing it just a little bit. This is a pretty thought-provoking, kind of funny sentence in English, however, in Aramaic, it's actually a pun. The Aramaic word for gnat is galma, and the Aramaic word for camel is gamla. I think I said that wrong. A pun is basically a play on words where you replace a word with a different word that sounds like the first word. Jesus made a pun. So if you just hate puns that much, I just think that's not cool. Okay, so say you're part of the ultimate nonprofit organization and you're an atheist, so you want some more evidence of this whole grand history of puns thing. Well, let's take it back to the immortal bard of Avon. In Romeo and Juliet, some of the last words Mercutio says as a character is just after he's been fatally stabbed, and he says, ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. Get it? Personally, I've always thought that parting and punning have something in common, and that they're both such sweet sorrow. I'm not sure that I'm ever going to be as witty as deathbed Mercutio, but I can always take a stab at it. I interrupt this history lesson to give you a bunch of random puns all in a row. What do you call a cow on grass? Mulan. What do you call a woman burning her student loan paperwork? Bernadette. Goldilocks went to the housewarming party of the three bears after they built a new house and she said, nice house, and they said, thanks, we built it with our bare hands. When it comes to puns, I always want to give myself an honest assessment but not be too hard or too soft on myself. Just right, you know, and I think, I think that pun was just right. Never ever park in frog parking. You will get towed. You know, I've lived in Central Europe all my life, but I've always wanted to go to South America. One could say that I'm hungry for Chile. <laughs> that was 15 puns in three minutes. <laughs> I'm applauding myself. Yeah. <laughs> so what am I gonna do for the next four minutes? Uh... For one, I do agree with the new time limit, no petition necessary, and for another, I'm really, really sorry that I am late posting again. I don't even have a good excuse, y'all, okay? So why don't the commenters and Jonathan decide together what my next punishment will be? And in the meantime, BFTBA, the helm is yours.